what is up guys welcome back to another video my name is nash and today i'm going to be showing you how to use our pivot tables so this is a tool that i use and a lot of financial analysts use in order to arrange data make it look nice and be able to perform the necessary analysis so if you know how to use this tool and you're going into uh, finance or anywhere where you have to use Microsoft Excel, you're going to be ahead of the game. This is something that I did not know when I started and uh, everything would take me forever because I, I work with a lot of data. So as soon as I figured out how to use this, I was unstoppable. You know, I was doing 10 times the amount of work in one day. And just a little bit of background on what I do. I'm an analyst and at the company that I work for, they have thousands of clients and these clients have, you know, different data sets. You know, it could be uh, data based on the insurance, data based on uh, how much money they're paying, you know, their clients and things like that. So my job is to simplify the data for them, right? And every company has a different format. But when the data gets to me, it has to have one format. So I have to arrange the data in a way that I'm able to understand it and I'm able to make my clients understand the data. That is what pivot tables do. And if this video does not help you, you know, learn how to use pivot tables and you're going into finance, I recommend that you look them up, you know, just look them up on YouTube. There's so many great tutorials on how to use this. And, um, you know, for this video, I'm not going to be going over like, you know, all the ins and outs and I'm just going to be showing you how I do data analysis using uh, pivot tables. So I'm going to be using data from my YouTube. If you have a YouTube, you know, there's a creator studio where you can download your own uh, data based on, you know, stats. So I'm going to be using that because it's free and um, it's not a lot of data because this is a small YouTube. So there's not a lot of data, but the pivot table is going to work perfectly. Uh, you know, even if you had a lot of data, it's going to be the same process. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to the computer so I can show you guys how this works. All right, so as you can see, we're now in Microsoft Excel. And if you look on here, this is not a lot of data. Sometimes you're gonna get a lot of data. So it's gonna be the same process. I don't have a lot of data right now, but same process. So one of the first things I like to do here is just look at the data, right? Let's say a client sends me uh, a file, right? In Microsoft Excel file with the data that they want me to analyze. So I look at the data, I look at, you know, I wanna make sure that I, see, I know what's in every column. So I'll look at the columns here. You can see that the, the title for this column is video. Sometimes, you know, if you're working with the client that that's doing something for their employees, you see employee name, maybe social security, maybe employee ID. So those are the things you're going to see. Uh, so you can see that here, this is the name of the video. This is uh, the title. This is uh, the publish time. And one of the main things that I like doing uh, whenever I'm working with data that contains uh, a date, because there's so many formats on how you can format a date. So what if I wanted a different format because I'm not really comfortable working with this format so what i like to do with dates i'll just um, highlight the entire column and i'll go to home and i'll just go here where it says general click the drop down and go to a uh, short date so now i'm more familiar with this style right i'm you know i can navigate comfortably using this style of date or this format of um of the date so for example if you had uh, money here and it just shows as a number value what you can do is you can uh, select the column again and you can switch this to accounting so now you have dollar signs and it is in, a, in an accounting format so this is not money so i'll go ahead and take that out but um yeah so this is the data here so we're going to go ahead and get started with the pivot table so you're going to go to insert you're going to go to pivot table all right so as you can see now we have this little box so the first um option you have here says i select a table range so th this is going to be uh, the range that the pivot table is going to pick up the data from. So it's usually going to be the entire page, right? Because you're trying to capture, you know, all the data on this page. So sometimes you see this highlight here, right? It already shows you that it's selected. If it's not, just go ahead and select the, you know, if you wanted to use this, you can change that definitely. But I want to use the entire, you know, the entire sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, select the entire thing so as you can see the whole table is selected and if you had an external data source so if you had another file another excel file uh, that is not open you can actually go to use external data source and you can you know change the connection and all that but i'm just assuming you have the data in this uh, excel file so i'm going to go ahead and go to uh 
select a table range. All right, so now the second task is gonna be, where do you want this pivot table to be? So you can actually put it on the same uh, worksheet, right, that we have here. So you can click on existing worksheet and you can put it maybe right here and the pivot table is gonna be right here. But that tends to be a lot messy, right? When you're working pivot tables, you wanna make sure that you have all the space to arrange, to, you know, move the data around. So I always like to create a new worksheet, right? So it's gonna create a new worksheet. So once you have your settings, you're gonna go to okay. There we go. Now we have our pivot table. So what do you do with this? So the most important part is going to be um, the right side here, right? The fields. These are the fields that you're going to be playing with. And these come from here. Look, if you look on the top here, we have video title, publish time. So these are the titles of the different columns. So if you go here uh, to our pivot table, where is it at? Right here. You see that these are going to be the same titles here, right? So what you can do with these, you can actually manipulate them on where you want them to be by putting them in these four different boxes, right? So the first one is filters. So this is going to allow you to filter the data. I'll show you that later. It doesn't make sense right now. So let's go ahead and um, start with the simplest. All right. So let's say I wanted to um, get every video title and have it in this uh, column here on the right column. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the video title. I'm going to put it in rows. So as you can see, now we have have uh, the video titles here, right? Uh, so the next thing I might want to do is, let's say I want to compare the video title with uh, the subscribers that it brought in, right? So we have a subscriber tab here, right? So I can click drag and drop it under value. So values is gonna, you know, assign a value to uh, whatever you have over here. So our values are gonna be, uh, you know, it shows you how many subscribers each video brought. So what you can actually do with this, is say if you wanted to actually add it in the in the uh, in the columns, you can put it on here. You can see that they're gonna be up here, right? Which is kind of weird. So you gotta be careful with these. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in volume. All right. So let's say I wanted to add something else. I want to see the views that each video got, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and add, um, put it put views in values. So now I see each video. So this video brought so the, the so this video the two best entry level jobs in finance had brought in 35 subscribers and it has 5,000 views so now you can see how i'm starting to analyze this data so now let me see when did i publish this video right so you can get at the watch time in hours or when is it video publish time and put it on here all right so now if you look at this you're going to see that this shows one right it's supposed to show the time that the video was published and uh, the reason why this is happening is because we put it in the values box so it's going to show me a value a value is going to be one obviously because the video was published one time there's only one instance for each date so you can actually move this to the rows so you put it on that you can see that it's going to add it on the bottom here so now i can see that under every video it has a time when the video was published you can also add this on the columns if you want like that it's going to be over here as well right now as you can see it has spread out the subscribers that the video brought based on the day that the video was published so now if i move this into filter it's going to allow me to filter by the date that the video was published right so if you look on the top uh, it tells you the title which is video published time and if i look on um to drop click this drop down and let me just uh, allow these so now I'm able to pick and choose uh, what date range I want to use, right? Let's say how many videos did I publish on um, on this date right here, February 3rd, 2021. So I published one video. This is the title and uh, it did not bring any subscribers and it has 72 views. Um, so that's those are some of the cool things you could do. Uh, you can actually add, let's add something else here. If you want to add the watch time in hours, you can actually add this to um, the filters as well. So now you have two filters, right? It's going to be hard if you're doing it this way. A cool way to do it is to actually um, remove the video publish time. So remove that. So now you only have the watch hours. So now if I pick um, a certain amount of time, so let's say I want to pick which video is 281 hours, right? Click on that. There we go. It tells me here. So this video has uh, this many hours and it has uh, the sum of subscribers and uh, the sum of views, which is going to be our values here that you see on here. So let's add some more stuff. You can add, you know, you can add um, impressions. You can let me take out this filter. Select everything here. So there you go. So now we have our videos. You can add more things to the rows like this. I also recommend adding one thing on the row because it's going to allow you to focus on different things and you can move this around. Like let's say you don't want to see the video title in the rows anymore. So if I remove uh, the video title, let's say I want to go by uh, the name of the video, which is going to be weird. So like that. So which the names are weird here. 
but um let me remove this from here as you can see now it goes by the name of the video it's like the youtube code for the name and you can see you know the same information as well you can filter by anything let's say i wanted to filter by uh, let me take this away by the video title right so like that if i go to the filter now there's a bunch of video titles here right you can actually make it bigger uh let's see here um like that and uh, now you can pick a video t uh, title so let me pick that one there you go so now it gives me all the information that i have on here that i need so that is pretty that's kind of like an overview of this i didn't go in depth on what you know really explain it it was kind of like my process when i'm doing a lot of data analysis and i usually do this really fast so i might have gone a little fast i'm just used to doing this uh 10 11 hours a day but uh, let me show you some cool things you can actually do in here with this data let me go ahead and take out the filter so this was just the basics of you know of using pivot tables but actually what you can do here is you can, um, you know, when you have your table selected, you have this box up in here. There's actually a tab called pivot table analyze. So most of the time, if I go here to my table data and let's say uh, I want to add more data to this or I change something, let's say I change, um, all these to zeros, right? So change this to a zero, which is actually, let me change, um, let me change, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change, uh, the subscribers to zero, all of them, right? So to zero. So, so all the subscribers are zero now, right? But if I go to the pivot table now, you're going to see that the subscribers are still there. So you need to refresh your pivot table. You don't have to redo the entire thing. You can go to pivot table, analyze and go to refresh on here. So now you see that the number of subscribers it turned has turned to zero, which is pretty cool. And you can also change the data sources. So many cool things you can actually do uh, using pivot tables. And so I'm just going to show you some of the things that I actually use, uh, some of the things you're most likely to use. Uh, some of these things you can just explore on your own. So now you can go to design, which is really cool because you can actually uh, kind of like customize some of these things. So if I added a bunch of things in here, I'm just going to add random things. Uh, if I added um, that, I'm going to add the watch hours to this. Oh, well, let me add it on columns. And so now it's like all over the place. Put it right here. All right. So you can actually, if you had subtotals, as you can see, some of these have subtotals. You're going to go to subtotals. Do not show subtotals. It's going to take away all the subtotals and you're going to have clean data because if you had, if I had show, um, subtotals or whatever it was, it was on this right here. You have the same numbers repeating for the same title, right? So this right here is the same thing, right? It has the video name and the date that the video was published and it has the same numbers. So it's a repetition, right? So you want to minimize that repetition to make your data look clean. So you want to go ahead and go subtotals. Do not show subtotals. No, I just have one uh, sum here. And every time you have a date or time in the rows, um, the box here, you're going gonna to see it's going to be stacked up like this. It's going to be below the title because, you know, it's going in order, right? Whatever you put first goes on top. But sometimes you just want to, you don't want it to look like that. What you can do is you can actually click on the date here, right click and click ungroup. It's going to ungroup the date where you can see the actual full date. Um, so another cool thing you can actually do is you can change how the table looks, right? So if you want to look, see it in compact form, uh, which is pretty much what it is right now, you can, I like using uh, the tabular. I think that is how you call it. That's what you, how you say it. Uh, tabular form. This is my favorite because it arranges the data like this, right? So now you can, if I go back, you see that the date is still underneath the title. What if I want the date to be next to the title of the video, the name of the video? That's when you use um, tabular form. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, so as you can see now, the time is next to uh, the name of the video, which is amazing. So those are some of the things that I use and I don't really use this that much. There's not a perfect way to use them. You have to just, you know, explore and move things around. And um, yeah, you're going to find, you know, you have to arrange the data in a way that makes sense to you. You know, you might see me, you know, put, you know, just uh, the, the video name on one column on this, this and that. You know, you might look at data differently. So it's going to apply to you only. So that is just kind of like the basics of you know um, how I use a uh, pivot tables to uh, work a lot faster and to work make my work a lot easier because they do all the work when it comes to arranging the data and imagine if you had to you know uh, copy and paste um, you know or reference the data you know it comes with a lot of errors pivot tables they minimize uh, you know the the chance of an error or anything like that but uh, that is pretty much it for this video let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this uh, I think the next one I'm going to do is going to be on the VLOOKUP which is another important one but uh, thank you so much for watching make sure to go and hit the subscribe button below if you haven't already and i'll see you on the next one peace